Welcome everybody to the Monday, November 20th meeting of the Conway Select Board. At 6.30 it will become the joint meeting of the Select Board and Finance Committee. Um, this meeting is being recorded on MCAT and by Zoom. Um, call the meeting to order. First item on the agenda, voting to approve the minutes of November 14. I thought it looked good. I did too. Is that what I remember? Yep. Um, I move to approve last week's meeting minutes. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Well, so there are three warrants. I didn't get to look at them all. Um, we have an accounts payable warrant, the amount of $134,871.17. Payroll warrant in the amount of $127,671.96. Payroll deduction warrant in the amount of $32,474.35. Um, most of that was school stuff. Um, the only thing that was even just mildly curious was that the the Pantomo land clearing thing in the river, that was put on Ron's, on the highway department um, deficit spending. Correct. Okay. Because that was flood related. It was, okay. Same thing with the um, Stockman Associates. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. To be a, to be a stream walker looking for turtles is a good, good gig. Um, meetings attended by select board members. Chris, I uh, just finished a capital improvement yeah, meeting go. right prior to this meeting. Erica? None since last week. All right. I did testify before the at the rollout of the proposed joint, um, or it was the joint House and Senate rollout of the proposed disaster relief fund to be administered by NEMA going forward. And uh, Chris Larrabee wrote a very nice piece in the recorder. Um, that came out Thursday or whatever. Um, and there was another meeting that we were at. I don't know. Um, um, yesterday I met with the uh, with Senator Elizabeth Warren's Western Mass Regional Director, and we we're writing a letter to Senator Warren as a result of that meeting, in the hopes that uh, they'll get USDA Emergency Watershed Program to overturn their denial of our request that they uh, repair and fund and do the engineering for the, uh, the, the location is uh, uh, Shelburne Falls Road, Emerson Hollows Road, and the South River, where the confluence of that, where the river was really wiped out the bank twice in a short, in like 20 yards, and uh, kind of undermines the road, jeopardizes emergency vehicle access, et cetera, et cetera. Um, see what comes of it. An MVP from Saturday. An MVP, yes, that, thank you, yes. Um, yeah, yeah, and the, and the, um, but the, the, um, the, the tour, the, the, the river walk was wonderful. It was well attended. It was wonderful. Um, public comments, anyone? There hasn't been a motion on the warrant. Uh, thank you. Um, motion to, I, I move to approve the three warrants. <laughs> Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Um, other comments? Um, unfinished business. We already did touch base a little bit with all the river stuff. And that long paragraph in our agenda is sort of a permanent addition to always remind us that it's really important that we keep focus on that. There's also an unfinished business, um, a, a, a thing here about Frontier Regional School cybersecurity issue that came up a few weeks ago. Um, I was misinformed about that, and at the time I scolded our town administrator um, for going over the heads of the school committee. That really didn't take place. In fact, it was quite the opposite. It was an existing policy that our town administrator was trying to better. Um, so I, since I scolded her publicly, I wanted to apologize publicly. Um, that was it. Um, new business. Since um, uh, first on, on the agenda, discussion regarding maintenance of town gardens and Veterans Memorial Park. We can wait a second. The last member of the 
Conway Pollinator Group to come. Last but not least, Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Well, in the meantime, I can turn it over oh, to you. Are we, are we in the are you're, you're just starting. We're just starting. You didn't miss anything, but your timing was impeccable. Okay. And we are going to be on focus uh, uh, with one, the maintenance of the town gardens. Um, in the past, the Conway has a long history of putting in nice public gardens and then, uh, and then maybe they get a little attention at first, and then over time, they don't. And I, th I think it's time for the town to recognize that gardens, like roads, need to be maintained. And so we are proposing um, to ask for a small increase in the open space committee budget to oversee um, paying for a professional gardener for the garden season. We're thinking initially probably at least $3,000 and maybe up to four for basically right now these two gardens, Veterans Park, which will hopefully be going in the spring, and the, the Christmas tree, the island garden. Um, obviously, it's a, it depends on the weather a lot about how much watering needs to be done, especially in new. Um, and uh, we have just, it's a small town with limited volunteers to continue to undergo the same kind of commitment that they have done for the last two years. So it's, you know, it's a, ch it's a change for Conway and, and I wanted to discuss it with the select board <coughs> you know, answer questions or see where you were on it. I think other towns, um, well, certainly in this one of the, the public lands go under the highway department, which has not necessarily been a great fit here, but, but it is what it is, and, and they manage mowing. And, and in our gardens, it's very clear where the line is, where the mowing goes, so there's a good edge. Um, but they don't have time or talent to do what needs to be done, fix a, fix a hose or make sure that they're installed. So, so that's so we wanted to talk about that. I hate to interrupt, but... Um, I've been told that our sound is really bad, so maybe if we speak up a little bit more. <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> nice and loud. Hopefully that'll help. Okay. Okay. Talk. Talk. Well, I did. I did. What do you all think? <laughs> uh, well, I, I'm just curious. This says uh, fence with the butter. I well, that, yeah, that that's, the next, that's the next okay. item. All right. So, okay. Um, first instinct, this is uh, the town's Financial situation is very much in flux. We are, we pro we are proposing in the warrant to borrow 1.5 million to cover the amounts that we spent in deficit, um, which is dependent upon town meeting approval. Uh, we don't know, but the, uh, there, there was 50, the House and Senate passed 15 million for disaster relief, but that's statewide. The, we may get something. Um, they were not going to get a lot. We were in competition with, you know, the Minster, or Andover, North Andover, uh, all these, all these cities that have put up 20, 30, 40 million in losses. Um, so, uh, and, and it's allocated behind closed doors in the Joint Committee on Allocation. We have no ability to, in, to cry poverty. Um, uh, so, I, like right now, it's. We don't know what to finance. If if we get reimbursed on some of that, and we don't have to take those that loan, some or all of the loans out, our financial picture will be in better shape. So it's everything's in context with the budget for fiscal year twenty five right now. Um, okay. You know, in, in the meantime, I, I um, yeah, on the other hand, a community that has. 
a line item in its budget for gardening is a beautiful thing. Um, to some, you know, it's one way to look at. But you know, the the um, I don't know, uh, okay. uh, you know, gr I, I grants would be great too. If I, it, it, I hear cultural you. council, um, anything that you can. Um, it wouldn't be a separate line item. It mm -hmm. is. It's in our modest budget. Um, we have also recently met with the the old garden club again to see if they have any leftover money, which is kind of marginal. And just in general, like grants, nobody wants to pay for maintenance. Right. It's just, you know, uh, we are going to be doing a small solicitation of gifts to the town of kind of, kind of like earmark for this. So, so given all that, and just to set aside for a moment the fiscal crisis of the town, <clears throat> What do you and you know and we basically are raising the money and using our existing our existing modest budget. Um, the installation what do you is think? Um, you know you probably saw this because it's on the warrant, but we have applied for CPA funds and uh, they voted to put it on the warrant, but we can't use those funds for maintenance. <coughs> right, and and in the past, you know when. The streetscape project in 2006 was done. There was a lot of planting that just went disappeared under the blade of the mowers because once the gardeners stopped volunteering to maintain them, so you make all that investment in plants and you all that investment of volunteer effort and everything to plant them and then you don't take the step you need to take to, to make them long lasting you know so your investment is like what it's almost like why bother to make anything better because it's just going to all be dead in a couple of years or destroyed by mowers or people who don't care about yeah, it's, plants. You, yeah. There's there's volunteer fatigue, of course, and we saw that with the planting in the uh, the trunk, the, the the commons in front of the former Pages coffee shop. The, mm -hmm. the Girl Scouts right, right. do they something. Do one year I maintain right. it myself for two or three years, right. and, and I get tired of dragging a hose out where right. they're. Well, we, that's yeah. why right. you have somebody that you pay. Right. to do it because then they're accountable whereas a volunteer you know you can't blame them because they have a family emergency or they run out of steam or they get sick or injured or something yeah. and can't do it but you know that something like this discretionary spending of any kind is really dependent on context if we're in a if we're in a budget moratorium where we are prohibiting department heads from spending any money at all, then we're not going to be able to say yes to something like this. If we have, if we have the ability, you know, it, it would look good, but there's, we can't, we don't know right now. Okay. Well, let's say, you know, we get, we get some, um, a private support. It would, uh, let's just assume that and then budget cuts or whatever be they may here, we get some private support, we, we think it should be, well, I guess if it's all private, they, they could pay the person privately, but otherwise, you know, we're thinking of a, 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 an hourly stipend like we've done for um, college students interns when they pulled stilt grass, for example, they, they went on the payroll for the season and they were supervised and, and then they were on payroll, yeah, and so they turned in timesheets. But this, so this is one model, this would be at appropriate hourly rate for the function that they were doing. Yeah, I mean, and the tax relief for the seniors. Yeah, I was just gonna say that. Yeah. We're, we are yeah, also, that, also, yeah. also on the agenda, I mean, uh, on the warrant, that special town mm -hmm. meeting is uh, adopting the state law allowing for property tax work off programs for seniors and veterans. Again, the size of that program um, is also dependent on fund availability of funds, which we don't know right now what that would look like. But as a town department, 
you would be eligible for interested volunteers to sign up, and that would be a perfect, I would think. It'd be a great fit. Assuming they yeah. can still bend enough in all the hoses. It starts at the age of 60. Yeah. Yeah. I must, oh. Yes, yes. No, okay. no, and no, and no. is there a max no. hourly rate for that? They get some kind of I minimum think wage? We, we, all of those things haven't necessary, haven't been voted on, uh, and it, it is up to set the select board to set the, the hourly rate, um, the type, you know, the departments, et cetera, et cetera. Et cetera. But I know, in general, we're reluctant as a community now to make people work for less than minimum wage. We, we, we do that. In, the municipality doesn't have, it has an exemption for minimum mm -hmm, wage, but mm -hmm. it's, it's bad form to make people You know, people we probably can have it with the labor market what, is, what it is and sort of the shortage of labor, you know, and a lot of labor. It's doubtful we could get somebody competent just for minimum wage. Just, you know. Oh, really? You got one? You know, you got a yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's a 60? But You're not quite there yet. Um, yeah, I yeah. am. You are? Oh. All right. Well, this is going to be carefully supervised and monitored by the. I'm sure you, I would be. You're used to that. I'm sure I would be. Yes, <laughs> with a cat of nine tails behind me. You're, you're used to that. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, but so, so I like you know, I don't. We'll see. I think that's. We'll see. So, but you know, we've got your support. Am I hearing this correctly? We've got your support if we pay for it somehow. Is that? Well, yeah, there yes. yeah, <laughs> definitely, definitely. And as far as the town paying for it, that remains to be yeah. determined. Okay. I cannot All give, right. cannot All give right. you well, an answer will. tonight. Yeah. But if, if this person, if we hire somebody and they work on town-owned property, is it okay to be, I mean, are there requirements? We were worried, we would have been worried about uh, the liability insurance question. And I kept saying, but, uh, they don't require the yoga instructor to have liability insurance, right? Are, are there waivers? I, well, I'd have to, I, you know, I'd have to pose this question to Maya and find yeah. out. I mean, all, all volunteers are considered town employees and are covered under our umbrella, but, you know, I could, I could certainly look into it and get a definitive answer. Okay, for that. Same thing with the senior work off. I mean, we're going to need mm -hmm. to make sure that we're covered right. for that as well. Yeah, so, so you'll be covered. I mean, it, you know, we throw, toss around like an independent contractor, a real, but the, I mean, that gets really pricey. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, but I mean, one of the reasons why it's good for your committee to be a town committee instead of a private committee is because the town insurance yes. is so much more cost efficient than if you had to get your own insurance. Right, right, but that's what I mean. The cost prohibitive for being yeah. a real independent so, contractor. Um, yeah. I would think. Yeah. I would think that that's not as big a deal as you might think. Okay. Okay. For big town employee, sounds like. Okay. So, in that three to four thousand dollars, that's your annual estimate for what it's going to cost for. Yes. I mean, <coughs> a, a max. Mm -hmm. You know. Probably max. Mm -hmm. Depending on the and so forth. Okay. Very good. All right. Number two is the fence and the Veterans Memorial Park. So you've probably heard it's on the warrant, the community preservation recommendation for the planting at the Veterans Memorial Park over here. Um, and, but the fence behind it. Um, Kate, did, go ahead. Go ahead. Sure. Um, so, so this actually came up because I was overlooking at the property with Walter Goodrich because there are some unhealthy trees there, and he was saying, "Well, maybe you should consider." So the fence runs between um, the Veterans Memorial Park and 25 Main Street. Um, and anyway, Walter said maybe um, until the plants get mature, you should consider replacing part of the fence that's already there, which mostly is falling down. Um, it's kind of a split rail type fence, but so which brought up the question of who owns that fence and after talking to probably 10 people <laughs> around town trying to get the answer, I don't have an answer. And I did go, I got the survey from I think it was the 1970s and did some measuring and it, to me, it looks like part of the fence is on the town property and part of it's on the private landowner property. Um, and, and I have not been able to reach the landowner who might not know anyway because it, 
maybe was put there pre. Yeah, they haven't owned it that long. Yeah, they just purchased it like a month ago or two. Oh, right? it, is it a new one? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, so oh, the Scudders don't own it anymore. It's a new owner as of like two months ago. Probably. Yeah, they've been doing a lot of work over there. Yeah, it's that. For the, it's the same yeah. property, the 25. Oh, okay. Do, um, do you know them? No, I haven't met them yet. I have no clue. Well, okay. <laughs> uh, well, well um, there was some discussion with this Community Preservation Committee, a bunch, about, you know, after she met with Walter and go look for the pricing for the fence, which Kate did a great job and has, we have pictures of it and the type of fencing and everything. And then the CPC said, no, we're not, not paying for a fence uh, in the, in, you know, recommending that. And anyway, uh, this is like beyond the scope of the garden design, you know, where the, who pays for it, the boundary, so uh, I think we're in consensus that we need to turn this over to you all. So two, first, first thought is, what are you, three, four years out tops before the border is clearly deline delineated with plantings? Okay. Right? Yeah. There's, I mean, the, not the biggest stuff is in back, the smallest stuff is in front, and for two to have the, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. So Probably three to five years. I yeah, but they're not so many evergreens. They've had problems with evergreens. Yep. Getting browsed, yeah. Get, oh, getting, getting browsed, browsed, although I said we don't want to not plant what we want native just because of friggin' deer. I, I'm yeah. loaning temporary deer fencing. Um, but uh, uh, right now, well, they're all like hardwoods. They're not going to provide permanent... There's some mountain laurels. There's some mountain laurels. Yeah, but, but they probably won't. They're slow growing. They're very, yeah. I mean, I thought of that too, and there's maybe a little discussion or wiggle room on that. But right, if you look at the pictures, it's pretty ugly. I have pictures if you want to see them. Sorry. No, I, I mean, I've, I've noticed, I, I think everybody's noticed yeah. that you it's see a lot. kind of ugly. I, I was always under the impression that that was the private landowner's fence, that they, there are issues there. We can't really plant, you can't really do work on private in the landowner as a town without written permission, etc. There's a liability issue there. The town can't insure thing. You can't. The town doesn't does not have an insurable interest in that property. All right. You don't want to go over the line, to, but you don't. The town has to have an ownership interest in the property that the employees are working on in order to be covered. Oh, yeah. um, even if it's an easement. Okay, so there's just a whole. And easements have to be voted on by town meeting. They're just. Um, the other thing is that there are some of us that have actual um, split rail fence posts and slip rail rails laying around. I have some. We both know someone that's got a big stack of them um, near you, near where you live, and um, they're actually kind of flat boards, but that style split rail. Because the split rail, you know, it allows you to see a lot through, and what yep. she. What Kate yeah. identified is a little bit more, it's not solid, but it's a little bit more coverage. Um, but anyway, we, you know, managing exactly where it's gonna go and putting it in is, I, I think, I, I mean, I don't think any of you all, they've got enough on their plate, on their volunteer plate. You know, we're not getting paid enough. <laughs> okay, so. The idea is that it would help with deer breaths. It would, even though it wouldn't be, wouldn't, be around the complete perimeter of the garden, it could really deter them and provide a shield. So it seemed like a good idea for a short time until we yeah, until I mean, talk to you. Stuff like that gets complicated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And um, you know, the, the, this is just something too that um, not really too keen on asking the highway department to take that project no. on either for the same, A, it's complicated for them too, the ownership, this, that, they don't have, you know, oh. Um, all that too and, and and also our original our original sort of deal with the creation of the veterans garden was we're going to leave the highway department alone mm -hmm. gonna, well there are gonna, other ways to i mean we got it we got a cost estimate from the fence company for about four thousand dollars you know i mean like and in the cpc proposal um the we're contracting out taking down the diseased trees because Walter said, you know, Ron's too busy. So, you know, there's, anyway. I know, I know. If, 
you saw the amount of unpaid overtime that gentleman is working in the past few months. It's really, um, I don't know, I kind of... Well, we're I not, mean, I mean, it was not the proposal to suggest that he put in a fence. Mm -hmm. no. yeah. I mean, there are lots of ways to get other fences in or repaired or, you know, materials brought from everything. I mean, it's just lots of, you know, theoretical. Yeah. At any I'll rate, I'll offer myself to help on that. There we go. I think the big yeah. issue is to find out, I, we need to find out who the owner is. The property too. Yeah. But I'll, I'll by all means help which, out, which deliver, help, help oh, build. Manage, manage. Will yeah. you manage it? <laughs> yeah. Okay. I, manage I can find it. out who the owner is. Uh, I I'll, have a post. I have a fence. Uh, a post hole digger. Yeah. If you find out who the owner is, that would be. Yeah, I can. I can. Work and, on that. and the line, you know, and where the line may, may need some sort of somebody with surveying. Sure. Something. Owner of fence. Thank you. Potentially doable, potentially really complicated. Yeah. Well, we have a young volunteer. Yeah. I would 95% with, with say management it's, it's skills also. 25 main. I don't know why the town would put up a fence. Yeah. So, but I'll find out. <laughs> um, okay, we have one other short item, which goes back to where we were over a year ago when we first came with a proposal for the plantings, the native plantings in front of the town office. And, uh, you know, they had done an extensive design, including um, a rain garden. And Cynthia, well, and these eagle-eyed people were particularly concerned, Cynthia, step in on the uh, uh, <coughs> Well, when I, was, when I was surveying the space, to do a plan, I noticed that there was one gutter for the building and one downspout for that entire building. It's in the front of the building. And unfortunately, the bottom of the downspout empties out onto that corner of the building and washes out the mortar. Yeah, sure, Kate, Kate went in and took a picture. Yeah, I so this, this brick out. is like about ready to fall out from that. There's so much wash out from the, the There's no mortar left on that brick. Um, so the original plan had proposed that we attach a pipe and run it under the ground and run it under the berm and come out with a little rain garden far enough from the building so that we're not creating a flooding problem for anybody's basement. But, um, you know, just to use that water to water the lawn at the moment, um, but to stop this erosion from happening. And it would, you know, it would look good to, to have a rain garden and to have not a corner that's not all eroded. And the other aspect that of, of that design that we thought could still be implemented is the tree. So we could do the rain garden and the tree without doing all the other plantings and all the maintenance that would be involved with maintaining all those perennials. Um, and, and it would still be a real upgrade for the structure of the building and its maintenance and for the appearance and you know down the road if the town cho does choose to sell that building it will be a plus to have that remedy rather than have a building that has an erosion problem and a, and a mortar problem <laughs> so so what are you asking? What, what's the nature well, of what we're still asking? we're still thinking that putting in a rain garden is a good idea, and definitely doing something about the fact that that downspout is you it's know enough. all summer long while we had those torrential rains, that roof was draining right onto the corner of that building, and you can see yeah. what what it's doing. So that video was from March of 22, and I just went and looked at it again today, and it's still, it's a worse condition, but, so it hasn't been addressed. So, but you, but you're already going to do a rain garden, and it, so what's, how does this, well, how is this well, different? No, here? we proposed to do that, and then the whole project got nixed 
because the walk, the handicap walkway right. had to be redone and it was going to be redone in the summer and so it didn't make sense to do planting in the spring and, and you know uh, and there was the opposition i mean it were, yeah, you were all supportive of it at the time and then we found out later that there was another significant opposition to basically anything there and and so the whole thing kind of got nixed but and the building still is. But, this, but our town building problem. is still getting eroded. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Nothing else. Nothing. It hasn't been fixed. I mean, so. Like the classic 55-gallon barrel, like underneath the downspout. With once the, it oh, once it once it gets full, like this summer, oh, one rainstorm. Yeah, one rainstorm, that thing would be full and it would be spilling. Well, you could have a downspout off of it. Right. Yeah, downspout. Yeah, you could. But it would be ugly. Yeah. Well, they're not. I mean, it's right in the foot yeah. of the building. Yeah. There's a beauty inherent to cheap. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe oh. we leave that in your hands too, and yeah. and, and uh, just go back and consider whether you know well, one tr one small tree. But one one other point about this is if you this would be a demonstration for people to see the value of something like this in creating a rain garden, which in Conway, obviously, we have, you know, issues for. with flooding and, you know, heavy Three. rain. So there's that aspect, too. Educational. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Timing yeah. is tough when there's so many other so issues. We get right that. No, you know, I, I, uh, um, I'm a, I really like gardens. Really grateful for your taking, for, for your volunteering, and for the stuff you're doing. It's making the town look better. It really is, and I look forward to seeing the garden growing and everything. So. And maybe seeing a rain garden, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Or <laughs> well, no, I'm just. Are, are you like? Is there a specific request in front of us that like we fix the downspout? That we, I mean, what are you? Asking us it, it's an observation that okay. nothing has happened, that it's been almost two years now, and, and that hasn't been addressed in any way. Mm -hmm. So um, if we were to address it, this would be a great way to address it, is yeah. with the right question. Yeah, it would be. And it, it, I don't, I mean, I don't foresee it being super expensive to buy some conduit, you know, some pipes, corrugated black pipe that you bury under the ground. It's not super expensive and some gravel, I'm sure, you know, we could come up with. Frenchy drainy stuff. A yard of gravel, yeah. a half a yard of gravel or something. Okay, right. thank you very thank much. You. Thank you. Real quick, did everybody get to see the procurement agreement with Andrea Woods and Furcox for the yes. public safety building? Um, yes. I'm hugely in favor of that. She is like maybe one of the very best things about Furcox. Yes. Yeah. So just to, um, I would propose that the money comes from ARPA because that was already set aside and not yeah. by. So just wanted to make sure that was still okay. That, that was what we used. We haven't allocated all of ARPA. No, we did, yes, but this is for, for the public, it's for safety, the public safety. safety. Oh, oh got it, got yeah, it. Yeah. This was all part of what was... Right. Yeah. So, so uh, uh, I'll just say so moved. Second. And all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so the contract somewhere here. Mm -hmm. Just I think I have it on the table. Okay. Okay. Uh, have an extra hard copy for you too. Yeah, I'm going to try to email it right now too. Thank you. One more copy? One more. Oh, you already have a copy? Yeah, no, mind, no mind, I'm sorry. We're good. One more. 
Unless yours is a lower number, let's say that. I got one. Thank you. I think I have it in my email to email Roy real quick, so we might just we're gonna be reading the language anyway, so should be good. Is Roy with us? Yep. There we go. Hey Roy. Can I call him? All right. I make a motion to uh, call the finance committee meeting to order. Second. All in favor? Aye. You got to unmute, Roy. <laughs> Sorry. Hi. <laughs> Three R carries with two Ashes. Um, do you want to just take care of the meeting minutes? Can we, can we uh, just have a quick thing? All right. So uh, I make a motion to uh, approve as accepted the meeting minutes of the Finance Committee for both the uh, October 19th and November 14th. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Three R. Two absent. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, um, when, when, when what last we left off, mm -hmm. it is to discuss the Article Three, the borrowing article, um, right? Yes. Article Three and the Article Six. Yeah. And so, since. Treasurer, tax collector, extraordinaire, Jan Warner is with us. Um, Jan, do you have any comments, updates on sure, the borrowing yeah. article? And I know I you, learned, you learned something. I did. I, I told you I would look into whether we could borrow uh, smaller successive amounts, and, and we can indeed, and it's recommended to do so. So that's no problem. So the article goes in for up to 1.5 million. You can take increments of whatever you like. <laughs> Okay. And this, but a six fifty is a fee for each time you borrow. Yes. Right? Yes. Making. And they're actually looking into uh, whether we'll need bond counsel or not. It's anticipated that we will not. But if we do, it's about another fifteen hundred dollars. That's all. Is that, I would think it'd be more than that. That's good. You can get it for that. Well, it's not a full rating. It's just bond counsel. Mm -hmm. But yeah. but usually it's not needed for an anticipation note. So it's just. Yeah. They're thinking not at this point, but it's not the <coughs> idea. Thank you. Yeah, school committee didn't need it. Didn't yeah, I don't think so either. I don't know why they brought it up. I didn't initially because I didn't think it would be needed, but it's on the table. Okay. So I'll keep you updated with anything else we hear on that. I would also like to point out that Jan um, corrected the MGL reference in this. Um, the one that was in there previously. Well, do you want to explain it? <laughs> sure. Yeah, the one that was in there was for borrowing inside the debt limit, and I think we want to borrow outside the debt limit. So, as you know, we have a set amount that we can borrow to a maximum, and there's really no need for this to take up any space within that range because um, we're, we're going to get the money back. We're not going to be going into a long-term note, hopefully. Debt exclusion. Not an exclusion if this is outside of the debt limit. They're two different things. Mm -hmm. So an exclusion refers to whether it counts for the Prop 2.5 increase. But going outside your debt limit, you know, allows you to borrow any amount. So, you know, we, we don't have such an issue here because we're not close to our debt limit. But if we were, we would need to go outside just in case we need to borrow for anything else. And as I pointed out to Veronique, you never know what kind of catastrophe is around the corner tomorrow. So um, it's best to, if we can, to borrow outside the debt limit. Thank you. And we're anticipating that we get sometime within the next 12 months something, something for the state, the timing and amount of which remain unknown. That is the nature of our relationship with the state, that is yeah. for sure. And the interest expense that we incur on this would not be uh, reimbursed. Right. Yep. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and there is an outside possibility, too, that other possible slow moving calamities that we're involved in. Um, Oh, 
the, 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 the tax bill, et cetera, et cetera. Oh, lack of, that that may, lack of may, cash may, require, may require borrowing as well. We don't even know, um, depending on whether we've gotten that back on track yet. So we'll hear, we'll hear in your report what, what the status of that is, I guess. Right. As you want to educate us now. Um, well, the status as of an hour ago was that they're still going through reports on Tyler. Um, so, but hadn't she said though that right. if we do so, get I mean, the... If, if we come to, you know, January and we still don't have our tax bills out, we have a serious problem. Yeah. Um, I don't expect that that's going to happen. And so I don't think there's, that we should plan for that at this time. So I think we should plan for the bills to be out within the next couple of weeks. And um, borrowing for the, the emergency borrowing will cover us for a little bit, you know, because we don't need all of that money through the year, but that gives us some space to take some more as we need it. And we still have, you know, the stabilization money to fall back on. So that doesn't come into play. The stabilization money doesn't come into play when you're taking an anticipation note. Yeah, right. So that's just extra. Yeah. So I have a question. Given our uh, free cash as it is, do we still, you still, Jan, have, have any position or opinion on whether we should borrow a million or a million and a half? I really don't have a handle on what your highway expenses are are going to be, so that's hard for me to say. Mm -hmm. okay. I mean, if, if you spent a million and a half, I would say we better get approval for borrowing up to a million and a half. I mean, Ron, last week was pretty adamant about a million being sufficient. Mm -hmm. Well, just for the summer storm damage, I mean, just to yeah, recoup what, like, <coughs> we haven't even had a winter storm yet. Mm -hmm. We don't. But just, and just to give you a further update about, so, you know, the, um, and for anybody watching, the tax bills were due to go out November 1st, mm -hmm. right? No, they were due November 1st. Due, due November, November 1st. 1st. Yeah, due, due October 1st, November 1st. There's been considerable difficulty um, with the software, with the, so with the interface between our data and the software, et cetera, the company that we dealt with at the... Our uh, assessing software. The assessing software, thank you. Um, is Tyler Software Company. They're out of Plano, Texas. And um, Friday, uh, Veronique and I did have a, a meeting with the administrative assessor, Lee Whitcomb. The result of that meeting was I called down to Plano, Texas and spoke with the head of software tech support and uh, ascertained that he was the gentleman that helped to write that software. That nobody within that company knows more about that software than him. Um, I made sure he understood the gravity and urgency of the situation and um, and uh, and he gave the town of Conway his personal word that he will take care of us that he will make sure that that we are taken care of that the city that, that the problems are resolved in short order and um, yeah so um, and then we can count on it. So, I, I, um, um, so uh, and, and, the, and then ha having seen the, the administrative assessor twice since then, uh, did, uh, you know, the, the feedback was there's a sense that we're back on track to some extent. There's still a lot of work to be done, but that the light at the end of the tunnel might be actual light and not the train coming to. Uh, so, uh, so, uh, uh, Phil? Yeah. Phil? Yeah. Troy? I got a question. Uh -huh. How come we didn't send out, you know, an estimated bill? Yeah. We, we don't, we, you, we can't guess on stuff like that. I can answer that question. Go ahead. <laughs> we actually spoke with the state asking just that, and they won't allow us to. Um, the only way you can send out an estimated bill on an emergency um, thing like this, because it, it is a backup to actually issue estimated bills it takes town meeting vote but in an emergency you can but the ad emergency has to be a problem with assessing not a problem assessing values not a problem with software so it's not an acceptable reason for them to grant emergency um, billing well, I remember 
not too many years ago, I know we had a bill that was uh, corrected in the second, yes. in the second part. And that you know, was the a spring. problem with assessing that we could not complete our values due to an employee illness. Okay. Well. The values are all complete. It's a matter of spitting the data out. Because I hate to be the the bearer of, of such tidings, you know, in this business of software and trying, you know, uh, uh, um, being very close sometimes is as good as not being close at all, unfortunately, as many of you know. So I just think it's uh, it's unfortunate. No, maybe, I mean, so what couldn't, uh, would it be uh, unconstitutional to ask task taxpayers to just voluntarily send in half the last year's amount and we, and uh, you know and they'll and they'll get the real bill when they get the real bill. It's illegal. Yeah, we can't. We can't, we can't do that. We can't it's accept illegal. money without a, a warrant to collect. And the flip side of that is also not is also illegal. You, you can't say, oh, you didn't send me the bill in time. That means I don't owe taxes. Like that it's, it's, doesn't work that way either. Um, so. I don't know what to say. Yeah. <laughs> it's a paradox within an enigma. Yeah. Or something. Yes. Such is town governance in 2023. Yeah. Um. Thank you. So I guess it comes back to the borrowing amount. That's right? it. it. comes down to the number. No, yeah. no, no, no. Right. That's your tail. But what you said, Jan, is it's kind of like a construction loan where we can say, borrow up to 1.5, but if we borrow, say, one, we're only paying the five and a quarter interest on that one that we borrowed. Okay. You don't have to borrow the whole amount. All right, and now that, now that Jan has found out that it can be done in increments, it could be 500,000 or right. whatever amount whatever. is decided at first and then see if we need any more. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's really just the town voters giving us the construction loan. Letting, right. Like, giving us the authorization for up to a maximum of one and a half. Of one and a half, yeah. Right. That was my only apprehension, is I didn't want to have to pay extra interest on yeah. money we might not need. Parking money at Greenfield Savings Bank or any right. 1% yeah, so. right? And you know, my concern, my, my concern about this is just from a public advocacy point of a perspective at town meeting, when you're asking for 1.5 million, but you don't, you don't know, you might not even think that you're gonna to need to borrow that full amount there's an element of trust us. We won't borrow the full amount if we don't need to, even though you're going, to, you're giving us permission to do so. And so those are, that can be a more difficult prospect. Or but we only approve, you know, five hundred thousand or a million, and everyone has to come back to another that's, that's, town that's, meeting. That's, yeah. that's exactly yeah. it. So that's that's right. exactly. Which has a cost in the town too. Yeah. Too. And you know, you could you could make the argument that supply chain issues we don't know what they're gonna be over the right. next six months or so. So yeah. Well yeah. getting back to this legal counsel, so if we were to borrow uh, authorize borrowing a, a million and we need another half million, we'd have to go back again and do a whole other thing and pay the council again another fifteen hundred bucks, whatever it is, to borrow the other five hundred. You know. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't quite understand If that. we have to borrow twice, two separate things, two separate approvals, two separate warrants. In other words, if we don't do a million and a half, it gets approved at a million, it turns out we have to borrow on top of the million, another say, I don't know, half million. We have to go back and get legal counsel again to uh, issue a second opinion, correct? Well, we, we would, but I don't know that we need that. Well, you're saying we borrow a million and a half at once. It, 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 it uh, severely mitigates that possibility, shall we say. But I, 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 I don't think that we need counsel just from, because just a year ago, that Frontier borrowed for the, Frontier School Committee borrowed for the track, 700. That was the pickleball court, too? Yeah, for the track. And um, we did not need bond counsel for that. It's this, oh, it good. was the same BAN right. process. So, um, all right. I mean, my thoughts are it's all about the execution, too. So, I mean, if we, would we, post the budgets on the town website or something if people want to track how the money is being spent in terms of budget versus actual. And that's a suggestion. I mean, best laid plans of mice and men. I mean, how these things are done and how they're attended and how they're executed are uh, not necessarily one and the same. So I'm thinking it's more. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the potential for pushback is more in the details and execution and the theory of borrowing money. That's all.
I, mean, so I'm, I'm, I think we should go ahead and all the right up to a million and a half. Mike, does, Mike has separated everything out in the reports that we get and in the warrants, so it would certainly be easy enough to post this as what's been spent That'll be good. in deficit spending. And maybe put something in want. the warrant light that goes out because I think that would help to address some people's concerns that we're just not, I don't know, out like a drunken sailor, so to speak. So put in the warrant light that we will be posting every warrant the deficit spending, is that? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I have, yeah, you. And then the, the other thing too, just to touch on your comment about the uh, free cash, just, you know, the, the, we did get certified free cash. It's close to, it, it's close to 10% of last year's budget. Um, we did get lucky in a few things. We got lucky that, um, the, it was very unanticipated that the interest rate would go up as much. We budgeted for a much lower save, you know, interest rate. For, so, so that yeah, that's, that a small, that's a small part. Uh, <laughs> um, and and they were tax title. They, they, they were they were, oh, they, right. they, were um, they were a series of town fees and town revenues that R and V or fees or it couldn't be that much. What, what we is had title? We had some very large accounts that came in last year. Oh, so you've yeah. been uh, knocking on people's doors with well, yeah. baseball bats again? It was like 118,000. Pickleball racket. The pickleball racket doesn't work. It's the baseball bat. That the there were actually um, processes that I've been working on for quite some time that was working with, uh, one of them was a death and the, and the family was working out selling the home. And that finally went, um, actually two of them were deaths. And yeah, so there was just three or four that were kind of contextual problems that just came around and well, simultaneously came in. It's kind of surprising, but I, I actually was almost getting pinged on our audit report for having such a high tax title balance, but mm -hmm. yeah. it was just a matter of time that they were coming in. Right. Thank you. And and then the other, the other part of that, too, there was, I don't know what it was, 170 that was... Uh, budgeted for town departments that was not spent and was returned to free cash. I thought the teachers had voluntarily taken a pay cut. No. And, and so, so, so that's kind of a fine line so that, you know, if you say, oh, there's that extra money, we should reduce your budget by that amount, then that creates a incentive mm -hmm. to spend it at the well, end of the Well, you know, my thought is if, yeah. if maybe uh, when we get into the uh, budget for next year, we can in a conversation of the tax title and then how much really was from quote unquote over budgeting. It appears that the over budgeting piece was like not even one half, one half of one percent of the budget. Yeah, Mike did send us an explanation of that and um, we actually started out the year with over 200, I think it was 230,000. Yeah, 237. Probably. Before, yeah, before we even closed out the year right. and that's about the same difference between last year's free cash amount. Yeah, no, being about the same. We so, had projected it could drop to as low as 37000 at one point. We were going to yeah, yeah, so, uh, you know. I got a question related to Article 3. Oh, okay. Back to the bar, right? <laughs> so, uh, you know, you were talking about execution. Um, agreed that that is important. My question is the the... Do you have to pay the 650 do you know if you have to pay the 650 dollar fee for each disbursement yes okay so we want to know what we want to borrow up front so we're not paying multiple fees that's oh, all yeah. i'm saying absolutely yeah. 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 So I, but the the whole the lesson to me from the free cash analysis is that we have an excellent financial team right now Golden Town, Golden Years, Golden Years of financial team. Oh, well, you said the Golden Years of people passing away. <laughs> no, 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 no. But this is we do. Um, Roy, have you any thoughts, suggestions, comments? Do I do I have any? No, I just want I want uh, I want to make sure I understand. So free cash at the start Jan as of July one. Was six hundred thousand dollars plus or minus? Almost seven hundred. Yeah, six eighty. Almost seven hundred. I still don't. I, I and did Mike do an analysis? Is that what you're saying? Yes. Yes. 
Is that? Do we have that? Did you send that to us, anybody? I sent it. My to, it? I sent it to Alan within a few minutes of receiving it. All right, I'll send it out. Yeah, please. Sir. Thank you. I'd like to see it because that's that's uh, remarkable. Yeah. It's like we got a win. We got a windfall from someplace. Well, well yeah, you know, a couple of mistakes that allowed. How was that? But. We've suffered so okay. much. We've su suffered so much bad luck this year. We were due for just a tiny, tiny glimmer of good luck. Oh, yeah. Okay, but that. So all that did was give us a little more time in the checking account before it, you know, yeah. before it's, it's gone. Yeah. So I just so, forwarded it to all of you. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So are we ready for a vote? So I'll start the finance committee goes first. Sure. You make the recommendation to the select board. We should go first, right? So I make a motion to uh, vote for the town to raise and appropriate up to $1.5 million to pay for emergency deficit spending for town and road repairs and other flood-related expenses, including engineering and design and to meet said appropriation to authorize town treasurer with the approval of the select board to borrow said amount under and pursuant to GL code 44, chapter 44, or any other enabling authority to issue bonds or notes of the town or take any action relative thereto. Second? Second. All Second. in favor? Aye. 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 The carries 3 0 in favor with two absent. Okay. Uh, select board, same motion? Yep. Uh, second? Or do you want me to all say it? No, no, that's good. Yeah. All, all in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. All right. The next one was, I think. Five. Yeah, with Article 5, this is the creation of the senior and veteran uh, property tax work off program. And the, um, the new substitute temporary council uh, did make the to change the statute statutory reference in this? Um, actually, that was Lee who told me that it was. Um, uh, section 5M, which included the veterans. Okay. So, and town council has reviewed it. So, so um, and that was the that was the confusion last time. We hadn't really talked about whether veterans would be included or not, and yeah. what the impact of it would be. Mm -hmm. But basically, all these things can be worked out by the select board when it were just when we find out yeah. how much money there is to work off, and how much how many available. Or, Depending what criteria we set for who's available or not, who's, who's a parole officer? Yeah, yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Um, so the only other thing that got taken out, just so you're aware, was the words low income. Right. Um, it just says qualifying seniors because that is not actually in the statute, and it's up to the select board to develop the parameters. Oh, right. Good to know. Which is yeah, what we'll do when we find out how much money there is. So. Yeah. Well, we have an idea of much. How much it won't probably be over, but that would probably be in thirty grand. Correct. Correct. So um, Yeah. So this is the this is the language that we would propose okay. to go to town meeting with. Because oh we don't have a form. Roy, hey Roy, come back. <laughs> there he is. I see his head. Yeah. Oh he's there. All right, good. We thought we lost our quorum. <laughs> <laughs> Roy, have you any, uh, wherever you are, have you, he's disappearing. <laughs> have you any uh, comments, suggestions, or, or, or John, about no, this article five? No. Do we need to take out of his earbuds? All right. Um, let me text him real quick. No, he's. Are you back with us? <laughs> no. He dropped some of his Skittles. It's <laughs> <laughs> probably the dog is eating them. <laughs> Roy, can you hear us? Roy. Yeah, sorry, I had a distraction. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> so have you any questions, comments, or anything on Article 5, the um, Senior and Veteran Work-Off Program? I don't. Okay. Well, let me read out. I mean, I have a little but if it's working in places, then it's working. And I, yeah. I don't need to deal with my questions. Okay, thank you. Th thank you. So uh, I make a motion that uh, 
We approve the provisions of Massachusetts General Laws Chapter 59, 5K and 5N, to request the select board to establish a property tax work-off program for taxpayers who are veterans who are qualifying seniors over 60 years of age to take effect in fiscal year 2025 or take any action relative thereto. Any second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Oh. Carries three out in favor, two absent. So move that the select board recommend Article 5 as written. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh, we got to have a second. And second. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 It's, it's unanimous. Okay. All right. Um, you don't get to leave yet. There's yep. one more. Um, we're going to have to deal with it. Um, so, but the finance committee's done. done. Well, they, yeah. Whoa, whoa. Oh, for the bylaw. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yes, you are done. We're dismissed from the adults' table. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Roy. We're, 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 I make a motion to adjourn the finance committee meeting. Second. Good. All right. Thank you. You're muted, Roy. <laughs> you're still muted. Still Roy. muted. And you're still on camera. <laughs> So um, a couple other just to clear up a couple so article eight that whether uh, the amending the bylaws to make clear that the moderator will use the most recently published edition of town meeting time. Uh, new, there was some question about whether that's really the, the wise course of action to take. Um, and uh, a new substitute uh, council, uh, council do, does recommend that we do this, and Bernie has. Right. Well, it was, it was because originally I had been told that town meeting time was actually legally the manual. and. This town council said it's not actually anywhere in the law that this is. And some towns actually vote to use Robert's Rules of Order. So it's actually not a bad idea for us to have it. So if, if the town, if, if this is what the town wishes to use and it makes sense to put it in the bylaws. So people could object and say, I want to use Robert's Rules of Orders, right? Yeah, um, the, well, there's towns that really object to Robert's rules because Robert's was apparently a slaveholder or something like that. And, uh, yeah, uh, so, so something something along that nature, I forget, but there's something in Robert's background and history that is objectionable to many people. Um, but uh, town meeting time is 724 pages of uh, reasons and techniques to gum up the works um, if someone is so inclined. He but actually had an interesting comment, which was that yeah. we're on the third edition right now, um, and he loved your change about the most recently published edition. I thought that was excellent. Um, and that they're working on completely revising it for a fourth edition and yeah. it might come out in the next couple of years. Figures since we just spent money on buying three copies, of course. But yes. it'll be a few years. Yes. I mean, it's, that's the plan, but they, yeah. So. Yeah, good, actually, that could use a revision. It really could. Um, so the other one that uh, town council was consulted in, it was Article 9, the peddlers and hawkers, canvases and news. So, um, and I'll just, just, so within the past few years, the United States Supreme Court has considerably expanded the doctrine of prior restraints, which makes it harder for the towns to enact. And, and so basically, um, even though towns like Ashfield and Waitley have something just like this, if it were to be tested in court now, it would fail constitutional muster, that you can no longer pass bylaws or any kind of laws that grant police um, or any kind of enforcement activity, you cannot grant discretion to these things. That it has to be spelled out exactly um, what would trigger a disapproval by the police, what would trigger a disapproval by the town clerk, um, et cetera. And that, th that, that those things would be 
you, you, the, you, you'd be held to that. This, as it stands, gives wide discretion um, to those entities, and also so that somebody that might have, you know, somebody that looking at this isn't sure whether their particular circumstances would trigger a refusal to let them knock door to door and sell stuff. Um, and so that that is a big no no. Um, so like. So basically, council says that this would not stand up to a court yeah. challenge, and therefore it would not. It would not. The attorney general will not. Cert it, what, your bylaws go, get sent to the attorney general's office, uh, Massachusetts attorney general's office. There's a whole department there that approves your bylaws. It takes them a few months usually, but they would reject this. Okay. Um, uh, so basically, this needs a lot of work. Um, and You'll, you might notice it says that in here, obtain approval from the chief of police within five business days. That was the first change that he mentioned because you had to have a time specific. And then the second was, as Phil said, spelling out exactly what the parameters are. And since there's no way we're going to be able, we're going to be able to get that done we're for this warrant. Yeah. Yeah. So, I'm, do we need a motion to table? Yeah, that's exactly what I think is the right thing to do. And if the town clerk is so inclined, um, certainly deal with this in June. But um, but in the meantime, sorry, Lori. Uh, I am going to listen to our lawyer. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I move that we table Article 9 uh, until the annual town meeting or until a later date. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So. Uh, so then town meeting more will end at our plate. Which means we'll be able to fit it onto two pages, mm -hmm. which means it's one page both sides. Which means we are saving, saving trees. <laughs> trees and saving money. Trees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Um, so there's that benefit. Yep. And then um, Erica's been working on the warrant light, which we will also. Which I think is, I, I mean, I, I just made some edits based upon okay. what you had sent me earlier this afternoon. Great. And I think it's ready to go if you want to take one last look. And then. I, if, if it's ready to go by you, I'm all good. I think. Except for my comment about the heading. <laughs> oh, that, yeah. Can I fix that? Yeah, I can. Um, yeah, that'd be great because then we can, um, I'll, I'll go back right when we're done, fix it up, have it ready for signature, and then. Jimmy said he would come over tomorrow to sign as constable. We'll be ready to mail out or send to the printer and post. Along with text books. Yeah. 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 This will be in their hands before the text. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, someone just asked me about that last night, and it was like, you you were going to pay anyway, right? Just put the money, like, you shouldn't be spending the money. <laughs> like, you know, it's due eventually. So do we, I forget whether we need a final vote on saying the town, the town meeting. Warrant. I certainly, yeah. oh, on the town Is, meeting time? Yeah, no, on, on the, no, on the town no. meeting warrant. Do we need a special, yes, yes. what's the language? Um, I don't remember. I, the reason I would like a second vote, just that yeah, for you to language? confirm your votes, because this has since been reviewed by town council, and I just think that makes sense, because before it wasn't, remember? What's the suggested language for the motion? Uh, uh, I move to approve the warrant as voted and um, as currently constituted. Yeah, yeah. Okay. As it currently appears in front of us right now. <laughs> with, the, yeah. with the omission of Article Yes, nine. with the omission of Article, article nine. Nine. Yes. Um, and, and the changes that we discussed tonight. Yeah. So All moved. Right. <laughs> Sorry, Adam. Um, okay, and I'll second that. And all in favor? Aye. 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 And uh, the warrant is officially have an official closed warrant. and Excellent. ready for printing. Um, items not anticipated 48 hours. That is the letter to Senator Warner, which is copied to Congressman McGovern and Senator Markey. Um, and we already talked about it. Anybody have any questions about that? Warrant. Warrant. Warrant, yes. <laughs> Town administrator update. That's late. I was board. working on the warrant. That's yeah, yeah. select board member comments, concerns. Anybody? Okay. Um, 
Next meeting is currently scheduled for December 4th, 2023. Do we want to schedule a meeting right before special town meeting? Where it's just well, it's a warrant meeting. Yeah. So town meeting's on the 9th, so that is the week before. Should be a very quick meeting. <laughs> All right. All right, so December December 4th, 2023 is the next meeting. Uh, six o'clock here. And uh, with that, motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. Thank you, everybody.